Welcome back to another lesson in Math 8. Today we're in Unit 4, Lesson 11 on both of the lines. Let's use lines to think about situations. We're going to continue our approach to um, solving systems of linear equations, meaning that comparing two different linear equations on the same graph and seeing how they interact and seeing how that information can be interpreted. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at the ladybug and the ant. And first thing is, what do you notice and what do you wonder? And I, I got to say, what do I notice is the ladybug looks a little creepy to me, but um, it's a little drawing. So uh, take a minute, think about it, come right back. All right. Uh, what I notice here is that the creepy ladybug is moving from left to right as we look at the graph. Uh, I also noticed that the ant is moving from right to left. So they're moving in opposite directions. Uh, I also see that they're moving at a constant speed because we see over time they're moving the same distance as they go from, from left to right. I believe that the ladybug appears to be going at 8 units every 2 seconds and the ant is going 16 units every 2 seconds. Uh, we At 6 seconds right down here we don't see the ant and somewhere right here between 2 and 4 seconds the two bugs pass each other. So some questions I had is where did the ant go? And what time did they pass? What's the actual time did they pass? Meaning which tick mark did it actually own? Maybe did they wave to each other on the way through? Uh, a couple big takeaways here. The big, big takeaways from this one is the fact that uh, both bugs are moving at a constant speed. Okay, that's a big takeaway one. And uh, they're moving in opposite directions. And what that really helps us with is to know that one of them has a po positive slope and the other has a negative slope. And then the ant is faster than ladybug. That means that the slope for the ant is going to be a steeper slope than the ladybug simply because it's a faster one. So we're going to use the ant and ladybug to make some comparisons here. Uh, we have a different ant and ladybug are certain distance apart. They start walking towards each other and the graph shows the ladybug's distance from its starting point over time and the labeled point two and five tenths, 10 indicates where the ant and the ladybug pass each other. So if this is where they pass each other, then that's a common point for the two bugs. You'll notice that the graph is labeled with time in seconds on the x-axis and distance in centimeters on the y-axis. <clears throat> this is a pretty standard time and distance graph that we're going to see over a lot of time or over the next several lessons. And we also know this about the ant. The ant is walking two centimeters per second. Keep in mind this up here. This is the line for the ladybug. We don't have the line for the ant yet. So we're supposed to write an equation that represents the relationship between the ant's distance from the ladybug's starting point and the amount of time that has passed. So all we know at this point is the ant is walking at a rate of two centimeters per second. So M is equal to two over one. And we have this point right here. And we're supposed to write an equation that goes with that line. So then we need to be able to figure out exactly where these two bugs intersect. So what we're going to do is start at the same point and we're going to go rise one, two over one. Let me read this again because that, oh, they're walking towards each other. So that's a big deal right there. If they're walking towards each other, um, then this one actually has to be a negative slope because if they're coming towards each other, they're coming in opposite directions. And that's kind of a big deal that we pay attention to that because uh, it tells us right there that the slope is going to be opposite of what we actually see. We might think it's a positive slope, but since they're coming towards each other, we know the ladybug's already increasing in distance. So that means that the ant has to be decreasing in distance, which changes what we do to our slope of rise one, two, run one to the right. And you'll notice that I skipped a line right there. Look at the intervals, that they're in intervals of five tenths. So when we see this, it's going to look a little bit different than what we might see, but it's still, that's a rise of two, negative two, and a run of positive one. And we can continue this pattern to be able to draw a graph. 
and we can actually find out where the where that information or where the lines going to follow all the way through and this is just one way of finding the equation for this line as we were asked to do what we'll notice here is now we can see where our y-intercept is that that ant started 15 meters or 15 centimeters away from the the uh, ladybug and that they intersected at this point so one way to do this is to simply find the slope from from what we're given right here draw it out and we can see that that equation would be uh, in this case d for distance is equal to negative two times time plus 15. Another way that we could do this is this, this part just says if you haven't already draw the graph on your coordinate plane. But another way that we can find this is when we find the slope m is equal to <clears throat> a slope of negative two over one, we can recognize that piece where we take the y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, and we can substitute the slope and that known point in there. So we could sit there and say negative 2 is equal to y minus this ordered pair. So we're going to want to use the ordered pair of 2 and a half and 10. So y minus 10 divided by 0 minus 2 and 5 tenths. And then we would solve the equation negative 2 is equal to y minus 10 divided by negative 2 and 5 tenths. <clears throat> With that in mind, what we could do is multiply by negative 2 and 5 tenths on each side, getting us the solution, or the simplified version, y5 is equal to y, I'm having all sorts of trouble, sorry, y minus 10, add the 10 to both sides, and then uh, y is equal to 15. And what I mean by y is equal to 15 is the y coordinate of the y intercept is equal to 15. So we know that the y intercept is 0, 15. And I can plug that into my equation up here. Uh, we could use the slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, where we do know what m is. And we could say <clears throat> that y and x, since we know that one point, 2 and 5 tenths and 10, this is an x and a y coordinate, and I know that m is equal to negative 2, and so I could say y, 10, is equal to m, negative 2, times x, 2 and 5 tenths, plus b, and you'll notice that I'm solving just for b or solving for the y-intercept, which gives me negative 5 here, plus b is equal to 10, add the 5 on both sides, and I see that B is equal to 15, which means that I know that, again, my y-intercept is 0 and 15. So a lot of different ways that we can find this. At the end of it all, that's the equation that we needed to come up with, and that's the line that we needed to come up with. <clears throat> Let's talk about a little bit of a different race. We have Elena and Jada are racing on the 100, or 100 meters on their bike. Both racers started at the same time and rode at a constant speed. And here's a table that gives information about Jada's bike race. So if they're talking about starting at the same time and rode at a constant speed, and they both started at the same time, I want, I'm bringing those two things up because they're super, super important. They started from or at the same time and rode the same distance. They're racing 100 meters. In a race, we start at the same moment from the same place, and you start from a stopped position at zero zero you haven't gone anywhere so what we can think about with this is this is a proportional relationship so the question is how quick are they going this is just jada's information and so what we look at from 36 to 54 is we would find the difference between the two points using subtraction and find 54 minus 36 that's a difference of 18 so increasing 18 meters every Three seconds. So when we talk about the slope here, or their rate, their constant rate, the rate is equal to 18 thirds, or 6 uh, meters per second. So they're actually traveling pretty quick, and I guess you can't see what I'm writing, but 6 meters per second. And so now what we have to understand with this 
is where we need to graph that. When we look at this table or this graph down here, we have a relationship for distance and time of Jada's bike race. Make sure to label and scale the axes proportionally. We need to label first and scale this out by saying that this is our time from start in seconds. And I got that label right here from my table up here. And so I'm going to label my y-axis distance from start in meters. There we go. Last thing I need to do is be able to um, put my data on here, but I have to scale it appropriately so I can label 6 and 9, 36 and 54. So six and nine needs to be done right here for the number of seconds or the number, the number of seconds that have passed by. And then my number of meters needs to come up and down the y-axis. So since it's a 100 meter race, I should be considering a couple different factors. I should be considering the fact that I have 36 and 54, but I also have 100 to represent. So I need to decide if I'm going to show just a piece of the data, a piece of the information, or if I'm going to show all 100 meters. Since I'm not given all of the information for the 100 meters and I only go out to 54, that's about the maximum I'm going to go. So what I'm going to look at is how many lines I have here to be able to represent up to 54. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's ten of them. If I think about going up to right here, nine of them, I think that this would be 54. And that means that I can use intervals of six all the way along here. So it'd be six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, um, 42, and 48, 54. And then along here, I think I can just go by ones. And then I can go ahead and graph those two points. So we have 6 and 36, 9 and 54. And then I've got a really good start here. <clears throat> I can follow my slopes here, rising 18. There's 6, 12, 18, running 3. And you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm going backwards on this. So rising negative 6 or negative 18 over negative 3 brings me all the way back to 0, 0. I do have a nice line that I can graph here. Nice straight data that's going to be continuous data because they're continuously riding their bike. And then what I want to ask here on the next question is Elena traveled the entire race at a steady six meters per second. So now we're talking about Elena. That was Jada's information right here. Let's talk about Elena's information. And we see that Elena traveled at a steady rate of six meters per second on the exact same axis graph the relationship between the distance and time for Elena's bike race. Now if she's traveling six meters per second. We're saying that we're going to rise six, run one. Rise six, run one, rise six, run one. And what do you start to notice here is that who won the race? No one. Or maybe you want to take it this way as both. The fact is, remember, if Jada was traveling at a rate of 18 meters and three seconds, and if, if Elena is traveling six meters every one second, they're really traveling at the exact same speed, six meters per second. And if they're traveling at the same speed, then neither one of them win or both of them win, however you want to look at it. The fact is, it's a tie. The race ends in a tie. Because same rate, well, it looks like an end, same rate, same distance. Actually, the distance doesn't really matter, but it, it kind of does. And the same starting point. They were equally matched. We know that because of their, their ability to go at the exact same speed or the exact same distance for the exact same amount of time. Uh, they, they just didn't win. We have the exact same lines here. This does make up a system. It's two different people with two different lines but those lines overlap exactly and perfectly. And this is an example of what an infinite 
number of solutions looks like. We have two equations we compare together that have an infinite number of solutions that are exactly the same. They're going to overlap or what they call coincide. Our example earlier when we talked about the bugs is like this. This is just one solution because those bugs, they actually are at the same point at the same time only once. So we call that the one solution that makes both of these equations true. When we talk about um, the ladybug, we had the equation for the ladybug would have been the distance is equal to four meters per second. Just straight out because it starts from zero, zero, rising four, running one. But then when the ant is coming through at a negative two meters per second, and we call it negative two meters per second because they're traveling in different directions. So they, we see that the, the ladybug in this case is actually traveling faster because its slope is steeper. And then we see that the ant is traveling at a slower pace because it's a smaller slope. So when we're talking about the solutions to different equations, we're talking about corresponding points on the graph, talking about like if Kari is traveling 75 miles per hour and it passes a rest area with 20 equals zero. So time, basically we're stating that the distance that they're traveled is being measured from the rest area on at 75 miles an hour. We can assume they're on the freeway. The point 250, 2150 is on the graph of this equation because 150 is equal to 75 times two. So meaning two hours after the rest area, the car has gone 150 miles. If you have two equations, you can ask whether there's an ordered pair that is solution of both equations for the both equations simultaneously. For example, if car B is traveling towards the rest area and its distance from the rest area is this. So when we say distance from the rest area would indicate that they're traveling towards each other but they're traveling at different rates. If B is traveling here, we see that B is traveling 65 miles per hour from 14 miles away from the rest area. So we're talking about its starting position was actually at 0, 14 away from the, the rest area and it's traveling at 65 miles per hour in the opposite direction. We can ask if there's ever a time when the distance car A is from the rest area, if it would be the same distance from car B. And then when we graph those, the answer is yes, because they're traveling towards each other and they're traveling at a different rate. Well, I can't say they're traveling towards each other. It doesn't say that in there expressly. So, but we do know the one car is going to pass the other car at some point. And we see that it's going to take one tenth of an hour that they'll be passing somewhere between six and eight miles, probably between seven and eight miles because it's a seven and a half right here. And that would be the one solution where those two lines, where those two cars would pass, not crash into each other, but where they would pass each other. Car A would pass car, car B um, and that, that rest area. I'm still, I'm gonna go back on my thing about talking about going in different directions because in this one would be having a negative slope they would have to be traveling in a different direction, not traveling the same direction. Same direction would indicate that they have the exact same slope, but that the car B would have started ahead of car A. A um, couple more things to note on here is, suppose that there was another car, car C, that had passed the rest area at time zero and was traveling the same direction as car A going 75 miles per hour. Its equation would be the exact same as car A. And any solution that we pulled up for car A would be the exact same solution for car C, kind of like Jada and Elena when they're racing on their bikes, because every single point on the graph represents both people, or in this case, both cars. And, and we can represent that the, the two situations are going to be the exact same for car A and car C the entire journey. They're traveling the same speed, the same time. Um, that, that would be the piece. Now, the question is, when we have two equations, that, or the thing to follow this up with final is that we, we have two equations like y equals 3x plus 2 and 2y is equal to 6x plus 4. We would get two lines that are right on top of each other. Uh, I told you what we call that is coincident. Or what we call infinitely many solutions or infinitely many points. Now, um, when we look at these two equations and we compare 2 times y is equal to to six times x plus four, we compare that to this equation, y is equal to three times x plus two, 
And as a system, we see that this equation right here has terms that are twice as big as the original. So if I take a common factor of two and divide two y, six x, and four by two, I get the other equation, meaning that we have the exact same outcome or the same situation where the slope is the same, the y-intercept is the same, all of the different points are the same. Whew. Okay, a lot of information there. Um, that's, that is the end of the lesson. I hope that it is helpful for you. It's an, our introduction to systems of equations. So we're going to be seeing a lot more of these and looking at a lot more times when lines intersect and understanding what they mean. So uh, welcome to the journey. Thanks for working so hard. We'll see you in the next one.